Welcome to the Mike Leaf Show here on the Warrior Sports Network. I'm Grant Wall, joined as always by the head coach of the Winona State men's basketball team, Mike Leaf. And coach, uh, we have a lot of basketball to talk about uh, today, but I, I want to start off first by asking you a little bit, a little X's and O's. Uh, did you really give assistant coaches Gove and Brown the green light to shoot as much as they did during that alumni game on Saturday? <laughs> They've always had the green light. <laughs> <laughs> and, and if they didn't have yeah, it, they were going to give it to themselves, exactly. right? Exactly. You know, they, it, it was actually a great turnout mm -hmm. for the alumni game. And, uh, uh, you know, it was earlier in the day, and, and we had that snowstorm the night before, and, uh, but, but they all made her and uh, made the trip. So it uh, turned out to be a great day. A great turnout and a lot of fun. Uh, it looked like everybody was having getting together with old teammates, getting back on the floor together. It just looked like a really nice time that everyone was having. It really is. And, and the only thing is you end up buying a lot more double XL t shirts now <laughs> yeah. once they get a little bit older. But no, it was it was a you know, a great turnout. Uh, we had uh, you know, guys that were that were older and uh, back in the day that actually played when uh, even back when Jerry Norman was coaching here. So it's nice to get that array of, of, uh, of players that uh, old and new. And, uh, you know, they, they tell stories, and uh, uh, it, it's just a lot of fun to get them back together. So. And I have to think a good experience for the current group of, of players to see some of the guys who went before them and, and the people who paved the way for, for what's going on here today. Oh, no question. And most of them stuck around for most of the game, and they were uh, sitting at the visitor's bench. Um, while they were warming up and, and uh, so yeah that's that's always a great thing and, and I think there's also the players come back to watch our current team uh, play and uh, so some of them do live a, a great deal a distance away and so it's a, it's a good opportunity for them to get back spend some time with some friends and, and get to see the current Warriors. And speaking of those current Warriors uh, after the alumni game took on Upper Iowa able to defeat a really really scrappy and pesky uh, Peacock team that gave you um, all you could ask for. Yeah, there's no question. I, I, you know, even today at, at practice, we talked about this, and and I, I don't think people realize the, the parity in our league. And uh, you know, Upper Iowa came out, and, and uh, you know, like you said, they were scrappy. They got after it, and it was a what a five point game, I believe, at half. And you know, we talked about it at halftime. Is this is what you have to prepare for every time we step out on the floor, and we've got to get that through our heads. Uh, uh, that first half, I. I you know, I, I thought our communication was bad. I, I thought we, we, we just didn't come with a lot of energy. And uh, you just can't turn it on in a second half, and you, you just can't have it happen for 20 minutes. So it, it's a learning process for us. And, and um, you know, I, I know our guys uh, know we can play better. We, we know we have to get better because we've got some challenging games coming up. Uh, the player that really stuck out for me, uh, the effort of Clayton Vetti down low, uh, 8 of 11 from the floor, scored 21 points, grabbed you know several key rebounds. Uh, someone who really got going um, against Upper Iowa and was, was able to do what he wanted to for stretches. Yeah, he, he really did. And you know I think every single game that Clayton's played, he's, he's gotten much better. Uh, you know he's building a good confidence in himself. Uh, uh, you know, he's going to play against some taller players, and uh, he's able to use his body strength to, to get the ball to the basket. But uh, the key, I'm, I, you said it, was the rebounds, and that's something that we've really been working on at both ends of the floor. And, and he came through, as, as Joel Armstrong did, and uh, a couple key players that came into the game that got us some boards, uh, John Walbert, for instance. So we've got to continue to, to uh, work at that end, both ends of the floor in the rebounding category. Uh, Upper Iowa, m not the biggest team necessarily in the NSIC, uh, but how nice was it to get Clayton and then Joel Armstrong, CJ Anderson, some of your big guys, uh, they really got some work in down low, able to get kind of in a rhythm. How nice was that to see? Yeah, it, it's great to see. And uh, But like I said, I, I really did. I thought we were lackadaisical in that first half, and, and that's something that we just cannot do. We've got to start off a lot stronger. And... Uh, Oh, it's, it's sometimes it gets a little frustrating, but um, you know, like I said, we, we talk together as a team, and uh, we know the the things that we have to improve on, and uh, you know, the only way you can go is up. So mm -hmm. we've we've got to do a better job, like I said, communicating, team defense, uh, and it was nice to see better rebounding. But we've got to do a better job in all those categories. Moving away from the basket a little bit, uh, talk about Ben Fisher, uh, eight assists against Upper Iowa. Um, he doesn't do anything flashy, n you know, nothing that makes you jump out of your seat. But he's just playing some solid basketball right now. He's playing some tough ball. He's not. He, you know, he needs to look for a shot more mm -hmm. often. 
Uh, he did that against Clark, and uh, uh, that's something that, uh, like Ben and I have discussed, uh, yeah, it's great to get the assists. He distributes the ball very well, but you also have to be a threat offensively, and that's, I think, always been a great combination for a basketball team. We had two guys in double figures. We had a couple there with nine points. Uh, I, we've got to have four to five guys in double figures, and uh, like I said, I think that's really tough for your opponents to be able to pinpoint a certain player, but uh, Ben's got to look for his shot uh, just a little bit more. Uh, and one of those guys with nine points, you mentioned him a little bit earlier, John Wahlberg coming off the bench, hit three uh, pretty big threes for you, grabbed six rebounds, which was uh, something you mentioned in the post game. a uh, really good effort out of John. Oh, absolutely, and, and he got us some key rebounds, and I thought in that second half, uh, we emphasized the fact that when, and, and it, it's against Upper Iowa, but I don't care who we're playing, that they take a shot, we've got to make sure we've got five guys crashing, we've got to make sure we're blocking out, we've got to make sure that we give them one attempt. Uh, it can be deflating with the, if they get a tip out and they get an, another opportunity to score. So uh, John did a great job down that stretch, and, and like you said, you know, it, sometimes he's got these ups and downs, but when the guy is on, boy, he can just shoot the lights out. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he did that against the University of Minnesota. Um, he got a little banged up there, but uh, we're getting him back in the flow, and, and he can be such a great threat coming off the bench. And it adds to that depth that, that you have going 12 guys deep. That's and he, all and he's, the other thing I just want to add is and he's so strong. He, yeah. He's really strong, and you know we've asked him to play uh, post-defense against uh, some guys that are two, three inches taller than him, but uh, he, he loves it. He loves the battle in the paint, and he does a great job of it. Absolutely. Well, that's all we have for this first segment. We'll be back here on the Mike Leaf Show. Uh, the voice of the Warriors, Matt Prink, is going to sit down with freshman guard Ryan Segula, talk a little bit about his first season here with the Warriors. Welcome back to the Mike Leaf Show on the Warrior Sports Network. Joining me now is freshman redshirt Ryan Segula. And Ryan, right off the bat, a lot of people don't know your name. They probably will here to, you know, coming in the future. It's actually Segula, not Segula. How many times a week do you have to uh, tell people it's Segula? Uh, it happens quite a bit, but it doesn't bother me at all. Okay, uh, looking at this season, your freshman season, uh, coming to Winona State, transitioning from the high school game to the college tempo. How have you done so far in practice? Um, like the first day of practice, I mean, it was quite a big jump. You know, I didn't know what to expect. I didn't, all the, every, all the drills were new. But I mean, now being a month into it, you kind of get into that role, get into that everyday thing, and it's, it's been better. Uh, coming from Whitehall over in Wisconsin, a very good program. You were a four-year starter, had an ACL injury uh, in your sophomore year, but uh, four, you know, three good years uh, leading the Norsemen over there in Wisconsin. Um, you know, coming from, you know, playing so much in high school now to being redshirted your freshman season, uh, has that given you a new perspective from the bench? Yeah, it has. I mean, I try to look at it uh, as an opportunity to, like, learn, watch, some of the great players like Ben and Tuck, see what they do, try to pick up some new things. Yeah, speaking of Ben Fisher and Anthony Tucker, uh, what, you know, did, has it developed your game playing against those guys in practice? Have they made you that much better? Yeah, I think it's uh, improved my defense because they're maybe a little quicker than me, so you try to learn new things, how to stop them. Uh, looking at uh, the season so far, you guys are 5-0, and very good start. You know, obviously you're on the bench, but you also are there for all the practices and all the workouts. Uh, how has it been going so far for this team? Maybe what's something that you guys have done really well, and what's something maybe you guys can work on looking at this weekend's road trip? Yeah, I think um, we've always been working hard in practice every day, starting with early season lifting and conditioning. We've always been giving it our all. And uh, things that we've been working on is our rebounding quite a bit, and I think it's gotten a lot better. Yeah, you guys' rebounding has gotten a lot better, and you said uh, that in high school you're kind of a well-rounded player, more of a forward, not a true point guard, but you like to go in there and get rebounds. As You know, you look at a guy like John Wahlberg, some of those bigger guys, uh, have they made you 
you know, maybe even that much better of a rebounder as you, as you go through practice? Yeah, I think they have because in high school not everyone boxed out, but now in college, you know, they box out, so you kind of got to learn a few new moves to try to get to the basket to rebound. Uh, speaking of playing behind guys like Anthony Tucker, Ben Fisher, uh, you know, you, you learn from them, and now looking at this road trip this upcoming weekend, what's something that Coach has really tried to fine-tune to start this tough NSIC schedule? No, um, I think he's been trying to fine tune, you know, like getting the mindset that it doesn't matter who we're playing, we got to come out strong, we got to come out intense right away. These past few games, you guys have shown a few full court looks. Is that something you guys have really tried to uh, maybe tune up in the practices? I know, you know, it's been a little weak at the beginning of the season. Mm -hmm. You haven't gotten into it right away, but you saw in those uh, this past game against Upper Iowa, you guys got a few turnovers, got a few transition baskets. Yeah, we've been working on picking up like three quarters to start off just so they don't bring the ball up easy. And then we've also been working on some presses. I think that helps because you guys are such a deep team that, you know, a guy like you probably start a lot of their places or even come in off the bench. But I think that just kind of talks a little bit about the depth of this team so far, too. Yeah, we can run the other teams because we got so many guys that can come off the bench to give our other guys a rest. All right, now doing the player profile of Ryan Segula. Uh, from Whitehall over there in Wisconsin, uh, what is your game day breakfast of choice? I would probably go with pancakes would be my breakfast pancakes, of choice. Pancakes, you have to load it up. Is there a special restaurant or do you like mo mom's pancakes or? No, I'm actually, you know, I would make them myself. And he's a cook. Yeah. <laughs> Write pancakes that down. Ryan simple. Segula <laughs> is a cook. Um, during your off time, maybe over Thanksgiving or over uh, Christmas break, break a little bit without classes. What do you like to do most with your off time? Mm, I like to spend it outdoors and over Thanksgiving I did some hunting when I got the chance. We did, we did talk about hunting and you know he, he's a quiet guy but uh, he talked a little bit about the buck you shot last year which is, you said how big was that? Yeah it was uh, 13 points and it scored roughly in the 180s. And that, that's, not a, that's not a small deer. By any <laughs> by any means, so maybe what is your favorite color? Blaze orange as well? No, no, I go camo because I shot at bow hunting. Camo, this is my kind of a guy. <laughs> camo is also my favorite color. Um, who has the best crossover on the team? Mm. Tuck's got a pretty good crossover. He's beat me a few times with it. He's got, he's got that that eerie that eerie quickness that a lot mm -hmm. of people don't see when you're watching, but he's pretty quick there on the out on the court as we were talking about earlier. Uh, what are the top three artists on your MP3 iPod player, you know, whatever, whatever you use may, to maybe get pumped up? I would go uh, with country, so Kenny Chesney, George Strait, and Brad Paisley would be my top three. Also, a country guy. You got to like that. Yeah, country boy. Kicking it old school. Um, if you were a superhero, what would be your best power? Like, what would you want to be able to do? Obviously, maybe dunk, maybe... Maybe fly? I don't know. What, it, what would it be? Yeah, maybe become invisible. So, well, then you could easily make the layoffs. Yeah. <laughs> That'd make it tough for the other players. <laughs> and finally, during this holiday season, what tops your Christmas list coming up for uh, Christmas? And I don't know, how many days is it? I'm sure there's a countdown going see. somewhere. Yeah, I would say maybe a new bow. A new bow. Yeah. The true hunter, Ryan Segula. <laughs> So, you know, if anyone's watching this, you want to get Ryan Segula a holiday gift. Something, either blaze orange, camel, maybe a new bow if you want to, if you want to drop that kind of money. But, Ryan, thanks for joining us here on the Mike Leaf Show. Coming up next, Grant Wall will join me back on the show as we'll break down the Upper Iowa game and talk a little bit about the first NSIC road trip. You're watching the Warrior Sports Network. Looking for great off-campus housing, Great River Management and Sales has a large selection of houses and apartments representing many of Winona's property owners. Owners and renters rely on Great River Management. Stop by the Great River Boat at Main and Broadway and see what we can do for you. Welcome back to the Mike Leaf Show here on the Warrior Sports Network. Grant Wall joined by Matt Prink, the voice of the Warriors. And we're going to start a new little segment today. We like to call it the Final Five. A look at five things from our last game uh, that, that really led to, uh, 
to whatever the final outcome is, the final five, five keys. Uh, and so we'll do that here with the upper IO game. So we'll start with number one on the final five. And that's Ben Fisher. Fisher scored, uh, didn't, didn't score a lot, seven points, dished out eight assists though, uh, and he's really mad, the facilitator and kind of the engine that's making this Warrior offense go. That's really the guy that everybody feeds off of. When he shoots well, usually the team feeds, uh, shoots well, and uh, you know, he, he is the facilitator. He sets up guys uh, so well, you know, he dribble drives, you know, even sets up plays like head coach Mike Leaf said, and uh, a guy who really is a think you know, he thinks about his teammates first. He's not a selfish player, but he will take that lane when it's given to him. And, you know, usually his stat line will always be, you know, eight points, six assists. He'll always chip in on the rebounding end. So, uh, you know, when you see a Warrior victory, you'll see a good stat line from, uh, from Ben Fisher. And he didn't uh, have a field goal in the first half of the game. Uh, and the Warriors struggled, uh, didn't have a very big lead at the half. But then you saw him get his points, all, all seven of them there in the second half. And that's coincides with the big warrior run that put the game away. Uh, you know, like you said, just a very, very important cog uh, in this offense. Absolutely. And, you know, when you have guys that can come off the bench as well, guys like Taylor Cameron, Xander Culver, uh, Xavier Humphrey, who, you know, we haven't even talked about them yet. They're also one of the final five. And, uh, you know, to have those guys that can give Ben that breather and get him 100%, you know, he's always, you know, going in 100% effort. Last year he had a few injuries that he fought through, even a slight concussion. So when he goes in there, uh, he's going in there, he's getting punished. So mm -hmm. it's good to see some guys maybe give him a little breather so he's that much better when he's on the court. He plays with max effort every time, and, and that's going to lead us into number two in the final five as we pull that up here on the screen. And that is none other than free throws. The Warriors on the season are shooting right at their the number of free throws that they have made uh, is right at the number of free throws that their opponents have taken. Upper Iowa took 17 free throws in the game on Saturday. Winona State made 17 free throws. So the Warriors are getting to the line and they're getting there more often than their opponents. Well, absolutely. But another thing you got to look at is can they cash in on those opportunities? And I believe uh, in that game against Upper Iowa, they shot 56% from the line, mm, which 17 of 30 really you know isn't acceptable at this level. And I know head coach Mike Leaf. You know, doesn't like to see that number drop below even 75. Uh, so they can definitely cash in on those opportunities. But you got to talk a little bit about Clayton Vetti in that second half to start it off. Uh, they just they would go inside, go inside, go inside, and either two things happened: Clayton Vetti got to the line, or Clayton Vetti put it in the hole. Yep, yep. Uh, and Vetti's play, we'll talk about that here as well, uh, was a huge key to the game uh, for the Warriors on Saturday. Number three on our final five. Is turnovers. Upper Iowa, 16 turnovers, and I know that Coach Leaf, uh, the Warriors weren't as sharp uh, taking care of the basketball as Coach Leaf would have liked, but they forced some turnovers, got some easy baskets in transition. You saw the dunk by Vetti there after a steal. Uh, the Warriors were able to pressure Upper Iowa into making some mistakes that turned into some easy points for them. We always talk a lot about that little bubble, you know, whether you, you play the zone offense that some teams try to play Winona State in with the two big men down low. Uh, Winona State plays within that bubble. They don't allow that three-foot gap where really you can just go where you want to go. And uh, they did an excellent job with Matt Leeson on Saturday. You know, he had 12 points in the first half. I believe he only had uh, five, or five or six mm -hmm. in the second half. And uh, they did a nice job of team defense forcing those turnovers, a great Great job of help side, but definitely those hands in the passing lane, turning up at that intensity and getting that play from the bench who can really, you know, you bring in Kellen Taylor, Brad Meyer, Xavier Humphrey. They all have that quick-handed ability to knock away the basketball and then get it into transition. And you mentioned Leeson. He's such a dangerous shooter. Sure, he got his points, but he was never able to take control of the game. Uh, and that, to me, was one of the things that helped Winona State get the victory is they never let Leeson... Uh, get in a rhythm and get going and take control, uh, and that ended up being uh, Upper Iowa's downfall because they had they were close at times. Could, if they could have made a couple shots, gone on a run, maybe things would have turned out differently. But the Warriors never let Leeson get going. Yeah, absolutely. The, they did a nice job of help, helping out and hedging on those ball mm -hmm. screens, and uh, Leeson never really had a 
an easy opportunity. He made a lot of tough shots. Yep. And you got to credit Winona State for, you know, making him make those tough shots. But, you know, Leeson's a good shooter, uh, even though he had the, the, you know, the, the usual stat line that he is accustomed to. I think Winona State did a nice job of shutting down the offensive threat, the go-to guy for Upper Iowa. Because he's a guy who could just explode if you leave him open, and Winona State never did that. Uh, number four here on the final five. The bench, we've talked about them already today. We'll talk about them again. Um, and we mention it seems like every week during this show just how deep this Warrior team is. Uh, but we saw that again uh, on, on Saturday. The Warriors, 21 points off the bench. Nine of those big points came from John Walbert. We talked about his rebounds as well. Uh, but when you're, when you're bringing guys with the talent of Wahlberg and Humphreys and Culver and Brad Meyer, uh, when you're bringing guys like that off the bench, that is an unbelievable asset for a team to have when you have players of that caliber uh, who are coming in off the bench. Well, teams just can't keep up. I mean, you, you hit that second win where, you know, the opposing squad, you know, starts to make a little bit of a run. You know, they bring in the bench players or maybe the starting five is getting a little tired. And then you bring in, you know, a line change of Brad Meyer, Xavier Humphrey, Culver, you know, Bryce Welch gets some time mm -hmm. in there, and then John Wahlberg. You can't say enough about John Wahlberg, who really had the momentum swing with his three three-point baskets late there in the yep. second half. You know, one of the purest shooters that, you know, when he gets in there, he knows his role, but he's a great rebounder. He can shoot the basketball, and teams just don't know what to do when they sub in the next five. They try and put in their bench players, but really the, the gap between some of our bench players and the rest of the NSIC, I think, is where Winona State will really capitalize. Absolutely. Number five here, the final the final on the final five. The finale. The finale, yeah, the finale to the final five is none other than big country himself, Clayton Vetti. 21.7 rebounds, two steals, uh, 8 of 11 from the field. Uh, he just really dominated. And in Upper Iowa, they're not a big team. They're not a big physical team. But he really just exerted his will uh, in that game. And, and you see that in the final outcome. And as you see these highlights, hitting shots from outside, going down low, getting fouled, getting points off turnovers uh, with the breakaway dunk. He was able to do just a little bit of everything for the Warriors on Saturday. We look at, you know, inside, outside, he hits a three. You know, he gets to the free throw line. He hits a dunk. He, I mean, gets a dunk in transition. So he's a guy that, you know, isn't, uh, you know, a, a he can get up and down the floor. You see a lot of six, nine plus guys or big guys that are slow to get back to the offensive end or can't keep up with their guy back in transition. But I mean, what this guy can't do, there isn't. I mean, if you can understand that, <laughs> there's not a lot of things that he won't do. He can bring a tall guy like last year, Matt Schneck. He brought him out to the, the three point line. He'd able, you know, he could open it up for Wahlberg, guys like Joel Armstrong, and you know, he can get to the free throw line. Yes, he can improve a little bit uh, on his free throw percentage, but just to see him finally hitting that stride, everyone was, you know, still questioning, uh, you know, is he is he back to full strength? And absolutely, you saw in Upper Iowa, yep. that is the monster that is about to be unleashed on the NSIC. And that front line led there by Vetti, and then you talk about uh, C.J. Erickson uh, and Joel Armstrong, they didn't let Upper Iowa get anything easy down low. If Upper Iowa uh, got into the lane, those guys were making the team work for their baskets. A couple of good, hard fouls, um, you know, not letting Upper Iowa get just two easy points, make him earn it. Uh, and a really good defensive play or uh, defensive game, just challenging balls down low, getting rebounds. It was really kind of a coming out party for those three guys down low. And that's the thing we talked about last week is, you know, we've seen the terrific guard play. Now we just got to implement the great, you know, post presence that is Clayton Vetti, Joel Armstrong, John Wahlberg, even C.J. Erickson mm -hmm. was down there amongst the, 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 you know, the Twin Towers, the big guys that even Upper Iowa had like Shanka. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, definitely you can, you know, you can switch on picks, which gives Winona State a lot of, uh, you know, diversity, whether they want to guard, whether they want to switch front, you know, help side defense. Uh, they definitely showed it against Upper Iowa that they're ready to go. Absolutely, and a lot of weapons. We say it every week, but just a lot of different areas where this Winona State basketball team can really, really hurt an opponent. We'll be back here on the Mike Leaf Show. I'll sit down with Coach Leaf one last time, talk a little bit about the upcoming games this weekend at Bemidji State and then at Minnesota Duluth. We'll be right back.
Warrior fans, let's celebrate history and honor the record-breaking 2010 Winona State soccer team. The Warriors made it to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament while also winning the NSIC regular season and conference championships. Join us in recognizing the team at halftime of the men's basketball game on January 15th as Warrior Basketball hosts MSU Moorhead. We are back here on the Mike Leaf Show on the Warrior Sports Network. And, Coach, uh, it's road trip time. Uh, first NSIC road trip of the season heading up to first Bemidji State on Friday uh, and then Minnesota Duluth on Saturday. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a tough road trip. Uh, you know, we've got finals all this week. And, uh, but, you know, we've we got to get those done, get some great grades, and then, uh, like I said, head on the road. Uh, uh, Bemidji is, uh, you know, a tough basketball team. We actually lost to them last year twice. Um, they're scrappy. They're quick. Uh, it's a tough place to play. And, and then you've got Duluth following that, who is normally, and, and they are again this year, just they're big, strong, uh, uh, physically, um, maybe not as athletic, but they get the job done. And, and those are two places that have a, a great history in the NSIC. So it's going to be two tough ball games on the road. Have you had these two games kind of circled on your calendar as, as games that really can kind of set uh, the standard for what this team is going to do this year? Well, I th you know, it's, we haven't had that many road games, uh, you know, but this is, you know, mentioned earlier about the parity, but mm -hmm. it, it is so important that you, uh, you know, we try and go through uh, the same motions on the road as we do at home and, um, you know, in our preparation for those games. And uh, these are two really important games, you know, following finals, that takes some stress out on you. Uh, but then once those finals are done, it's kind of a, a, a stress relief factor that you don't have to worry about studying anymore. Um, but you are on the road at, at two places that are tough to play in, and they're going to be ready. How do you get a team with uh, some new, fresh faces like this one, as well as, as some old hands, uh, experienced players in the NSIC, but how do you get them ready for a schedule where you mentioned the parity? Any team can win on any given night. Yeah, it's, I, I think really the important thing um, is that you are preparing yourself each and every game. We're giving them as much information as we can about you know going through our scout team and scouting reports, but, but it's also what you carry over from your practices on a day-to-day -day basis. And, uh, you know, we, we, it's ironic, we, but we did talk about that today. And, uh, you know, you, you throw that uh, fourth team in the nation. You know, I told him this. I said, I, I don't think we're fourth in the nation. We're not, we're not that good. And, but the thing is is that it's out there, and so a team is going to prepare themselves and play that much harder when, when you're at their place or when they're on the road. So we've, we've, we've got to recognize that it's a great position to be in, but at the same time, like you said, on any given night, anything can happen. So we can't just play 20 minutes of ball like against Upper Iowa. We've got to play 40, and we got to, I mean, it's got to start that first five minutes, and it's got to go from start to finish. With these hostile environments you're going to be walking into, how nice is it to have, we talked about him earlier, but how nice is it to have a guy like Ben Fisher, who's out on the court, has been through all of those uh, NSIC experiences, has experience in the postseason, uh, winning a national championship. How nice is it having him running the floor and, and kind of getting people where they need to go? Yeah, it, well, it's a tremendous help. And, and, you know, you can go up and down the line, but you look at someone like a Brad Meyer who's been through it, um, Bryce Welch. And, you know, even though Bryce doesn't get the minutes, but he's been through it and he understands. And uh, just them sharing their experiences does make a difference. And, and they all recognize the fact that everybody's trying to knock you off. So you, you've got to be ready and, and willing to you know, get, go the extra mile. Uh, Ben's closing in on the all-time assist record here at Winona State. Uh, what has he meant uh, to you and, and this program in the four years that he's been here in Winona? Well, I, I, ben is a, a, a tremendous, just a tremendous person. Uh, he's a great student. Uh, he's somebody who's not lazy. He's somebody who really gets things done. Uh, and when you get to the basketball court, he's, he's a guy that wants to win. And he really thinks the game. Uh, you know, the other day he brought me a play that he drew up 
that he thought we should use that he saw on, on uh, the Butler game against Duke. And, uh, you know, I said, we'll definitely take a look at it. But he said it was so successful. But he's always thinking the game. And he, he does want to win. And he's so unselfish. That's why the assist record is, is, is there for him, is because he loves to distribute the ball. And like I said earlier, I'd like him to shoot a little bit more often because he's got a great That's shot. Right. And he can finish going to the mm -hmm. hole. But I think, uh, you know, he'll do that for us uh, when need be. But I know he's trying to get everybody in the picture. Absolutely. Well, that is all the time we have here on the Mike Leaf Show this week. Thank you very much, Coach. Thank you. For Coach Leaf, Matt Prink, I'm Grant Wall. We'll see you next week here on the Warrior Sports Network.